By the end of the 1990s, action films weren't just spectacular, they were ridiculous. Thanks to digital effects, action films were going more and more over the top. And action heroes weren't just good guys anymore, they were invincible super warriors who could perform the impossible. So while most action films were getting bigger and more absurd, in 2002, one film chose to go in the opposite direction. That film was The Born Identity. In telling the story of a secret agent who has amnesia, both the original Born films and its far superior sequels were stripped down, straightforward action films that aimed for realism rather than spectacle. Now, you can sit back and enjoy the Bourne films as political thrillers, but behind all the action, these are smart and subversive films that deal with issues of identity, surveillance, and what life is like in the post-9-11 world. How do the films do all this? Well, just give me a few minutes of your time, and let's go back and take a closer look at the Bourne trilogy. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. 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 James Bond. When it comes to globe-hopping super spies, most people think of James Bond. Now, the world of James Bond was a fantasy world of cool cars, beautiful women, and slick gadgets. But with Bourne, the filmmakers wanted their hero to be the opposite of James Bond. They wanted the Bourne films to appear as if they took place in the real world. So rather than looking like some traditional action film, director Paul Greengrass designed the Bourne film to look more like a documentary. Now the first method he used to achieve this sense of realism was the use of handheld cameras. Handheld cameras lent the film a sense of immediacy. The handheld camera also allowed greater mobility when filming the action scenes. These cameras put the audience right at the center of the action and gave the fight scenes in the Bourne identity that feel that they were being captured rather than just being staged. Another method used in the film to create realism was the rhythm of the editing. Now the cuts in these films are deliberately abrasive because they interrupt the actions and the camera movements. Pans, zooms, and the movements of the actors are seldom even allowed to come to rest before the shot changes. So here there's no slow motion, there's no, there are no smooth transitions. Instead of the rhythm of the film being shot to cater to the viewer, here the viewer has to adjust their vision to the rhythm of the film. Now this jagged editing style has led some viewers to criticize Bourne for being too shaky and jerky in their camera movements, and some have even accused the film of inducing queasiness. But for me, this is a part of the whole fun of the Bourne movies. They're not overly slick and graceful like the Bond films. When Bourne's in a car chase, the car isn't some slick black sports car, it's just a car. When Bourne jumps off something and lands, he doesn't do it with cat-like grace. When he lands on something, he really lands on it. And after a fight scene is done, Bourne may have survived, but he looks like he's in pain. He looks tired. So unlike other action films, this movie is designed to make you believe it's taking place in reality and that Jason Bourne himself is a real person. Power of Surveillance plays an important role in the Bourne trilogy, especially the third film, The Bourne Ultimatum. But in order to understand the importance of surveillance, we have to understand the context in which the film was released. In 2007, America was in the midst of a contentious debate over government power versus personal privacy. At the time, the government was taking on extraordinary powers to surveil its citizens in the name of protecting us from terrorism. This gave rise to something called the culture of surveillance. Now because of this growing culture of surveillance, 
anyone can be tracked down. Everything, every movement can be seen. And seemingly anyone can be found through their digital footprint and through the watchful eye of the government. We can see this culture of surveillance in the Bourne films. Here, corrupt government officials and black op spies use closed circuit cameras all over the world to try and track Jason Bourne's movements. But because Jason Bourne is a man with, with no identity and has no digital footprint, this allows him to evade his pursuers and turn the culture of surveillance against itself. In one scene, Bourne even turns the tables on his pursuers and ends up spying on those who are trying to spy on him. But this is why contemporary audiences really bought into the Bourne movies. We root for Bourne, not just because he's a badass fighter, but because he's going toe to toe against a surveillance culture that tracks and controls our movements and information. So in this respect, Jason Bourne is the James Bond of the 21st century, a super spy who is both part of the system and its enemy. If you haven't seen the Bourne films yet, I encourage you to seek them out. They're smart, sophisticated action filmmaking. Thanks for listening. Please post comments below, share this video, and subscribe to my channel.